VR opens the door to new game IDs, and games like Moss, Astro Boy or Ghost Giant are a perfect example of this with their own VR third-person controller mode. Now, you've read the title, right? In this video, I have the pleasure to share with you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how you can make this type of game in Unity. Now, my goal on this channel is to post one video per week every Sunday, and you can help by joining our awesome community on Patreon, where you will be able to find the source code of this project, as well as some exclusive content. But without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so here I am in a very simple Unity project. I've already done the VR setup with hand presents and with a direct interactor to grab object. Now, if you don't know how to do this yourself, go watch the first three episodes of my tutorial series on how to make a VR game in Unity. It will teach you everything that you need to know. Anyway, now to create a third-person VR controller, we are going to use as a foundation a traditional character controller. And in my opinion, the best one out there is this one made by Unity. It is free and comes with nice documentation and a video. So let's click on Add to my assets and then open it in Unity. There you go. You should see it among your asset now. And then we can finally click on Download here. Now, in my case, I've already downloaded it earlier. So what's left for me is to click here on Import. We can then select Install Upgrade and finally click again on Import. Okay, so here you go. Now the package should be in your project. We can close this window and if we go now to Starter Assets, Third Person Controller, Scene and double click on Playground. Here it is, you can see a beautiful scene that was made by Unity to showcase what's inside this package. But now let's try to test this by clicking on Play. As you can see, I can move around with the arrow key and move the camera using the mouse movement. <laughs> this looks really cool. And we can even jump with the space key and sprint with the upper kicks. So our job at this point will be to turn this and make it work in VR with the VR controller. Okay, so let's leave play mode. Now we are going to go back to our previous scene in scene, base scene. Let's double click on it. Next, to test, I think it can be cool to have the same environment as earlier in this scene. So let's get it in the starter assets, environment, prefabs, and drag the environment prefab in the hierarchy. Now, as you can see, there is some Z fighting going on with the plane. So let's set it in the scene and press on delete to remove it. There you go. And let's add the third person controller with the character from that package that we can locate in starter asset, third person controller, prefabs, player armature. Perfect. Now let's drag it in the hierarchy and I'm going to move it maybe next to the stairs right here. Now in more third person VR game, what works great is to make the VR player a giant above the character. So what we can do is select our XR origin under XR interaction setup. I'm going to move it near the character and rotate it to face his direction. There you go. Next, we can increase the size of the character by setting its scale to 10 on all axes. Now, this is where things get important. In the case of a third person VR game, we don't want the VR rig to track the floor of the player. So what we can do is actually go in the tracking origin mode of the XR origin and set it to device. Then we can set the camera Y offset to zero. And finally, go to the camera offset transform, if you have one, and set its position to zero as well. There we go. Now this way, we can select our XR origin and move it anywhere. And this will be the exact position that our VR headset will have at the start without taking the height of the player into account, which is what we want. Now, let's find out if this works by clicking on play. And as you can see, it works. I feel like a giant in the environment, which is super cool. And already you should be able to move the character using the arrow key, like it was the case in the other scene. Now just make sure to focus the game windows to make the input works by clicking on the screen. Now, if for some reason you have a null reference, it might be because you have not set the main camera tag on your camera. So be sure to go to the main camera, which is located under the XR origin. 
Here on the top, set the tag to main camera. This is actually used by the character controller to know which fitting direction the player should have. Now already, as you can see, we have a working VR third-person character, but it is only working with the keyboard input, not with our VR controller input, so let's see how we can fix this. Okay, so first let's select our player armature prefab in the scene. As you can see, we can have a look at all of the components responsible to move the 3D character. We have here the character controller for the actual movement, the third-person controller which contains all of the settings that we can tweak, like the movement speed, the gravity, the jump height, and so on. And by the way, as we have not an actual following camera on this player, as we are using a VR camera, what we can do is select here the lock camera position. Then down below, we have the starter asset input and the player input, which are responsible, as the name suggests, to listen to the input of the player. So for example, if I click on play, as you can see, if I change the value of the move vector to here, it is moving our character. Same goes for the jump and the sprint boolean. Now let me just leave play mode and let's see how we can tweak these two components to make it work with the VR controller as well. So if I go to the player input and double click on starter assets, we can have a look at the input action that are used to move the character. You can basically use the left stick of a gamepad or the WASD key. So what we can do is add another binding, but for the VR controller as well. To do so, I'm going to click on plus add bindings. We can select it. And in my case, I'm going to select the left joystick by going to XR controller, XR controller left, optional controls, primary to the axis. There you go. Now we can do the same for the jump. And in my case, I want to set the A button on the right controller to jump. So let's go to XR controller right hand, optional controls, primary button. There you go, there is only one left to do. For the sprint button, let's add another binding and set it to the right trigger, for example. So we can go this time to XR controller, right hand, optional controls, trigger. There you go, now everything is ready. We can save the asset over here and close the window. But at this point, unfortunately, if I click on play, well, even if I press on all of the input on my VR controller, it doesn't seem to work. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, I have actually no idea of why it is not working. It seems like the player input component has some sort of issue with the VR input for some reason. But who knows, maybe it will work for you right away. But if it's not the case, here is a solution. Let's leave play mode, go to the player armature, and we are going to disable the player input component. But instead, directly use the action in this starter asset script. So let's double click on it to open it. There you go. At the top, I'm going to create a three input action property. The public input action property move action, jump action, and finally sprint action. There you go. Now in the start function that we can add, let's do move action dot action dot perform plus equals x little arrow to the right move input x dot read value vector two. This way, what we are doing is basically set the move input directly from the move action value. But now let's do the same with the jump and sprint with this time jump action dot action dot perform plus equals x arrow to the right jump input x dot action dot is pressed. And finally the same but this time for the sprint with sprint action dot action dot perform plus equals x sprint input x dot action dot is pressed. And there you go, guys. Sorry if this is a bit confusing. Now, anyway, let's save and go back to Unity. Now, for the move action, we can enable use reference and search for our player move. Make sure to take the one that is under the starter asset. And then we can do the same for the jump and the sprint action. And there you go. But now the final and very important step is to add the action property in the input action manager to enable all of our input at the start. So what you need is to go to your input action manager. Mine is right over there. And then if I click on the plus button and add the starter asset input action map, everything should finally work. Now let's click on play to test what we made. 
And there you go guys, as you can see, it is working. We can now move the player with the joystick. We can then jump with the A button and sprint with the trigger button. But you might notice a little issue. Well, when I stop pressing on the joystick anymore, the player keeps moving. Now to fix this issue, let's leave play mode. So this issue is caused by the dead zone of the joystick, which is not set currently. So what we can do is open again the starter asset, select our primary to the axis binding, and in processor, click on plus, stick, dead zone. And there you go, this should fix our little problem. Now we can save the asset and close these windows. And for the cherry on the cake, the final thing to do on this project, which I think is pretty cool, let me show you something. If I take one of the cube over there, and that I add an XR grab interactable, use the dynamic attach, and move this cube near our player, if I click on play, as you can see, first everything is working well and the character stops when I stop pressing on the joystick. But also with the XR Grab Interactable component that we just added, we can move the cube and grab it and it can be used as a platform by our character. This is cool, right? And I'm sure it will give you guys plenty of ideas of how to mix VR interaction with this character controller system. Now, this is the end of this tutorial, which I hope you guys enjoyed. A big shout out to my Patreon for supporting my work. Their name will appear on the screen right now. And if like them, you want to get access to the source code of this project and other exclusive content, join us. The link is in the description. Now, thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.